let us start our next chapter inventory controls see this is bit uh, big chapter okay but at the same time it is very very important chapter if you are considering gate or any exams which is related to gate because uh, every year in gate there will be one question from this particular topic okay, inventory control and if you ask me whether it is tough of course not the complete industrial engineering will be easy only and even in inventory controls also all the problems will be easy and also the methodologies will also be easy just you need to remember some steps you need to remember some small small concepts and formulas that's it okay first we will uh, i will just introduce the inventory controls to you later on we will see some theoretical aspects of inventory control then there are few models okay so probabilistic models and deterministic model we will go through the different types of models and corresponding problems finally i will end this particular chapter it's going to be a bit lengthy chapter but i am saying it it's very important chapter and also easy okay right to start with first of all what is inventory very simple the the materials the raw material or any resources which you are going to save okay instead of using it for example you are running an running an industry okay you are running an industry you imagine that you are running some uh, uh, automobile industry okay so instead of directly using all the material which is available to you for the production what you will do you will store some material separately okay you will be storing some material separately and whenever requirement come you will be taking it from the storage and you will be using it and that is something called as inventory simply the storage space or storage um, the storage which is which is going to be there which can be used later on okay later purposes whenever it is required suppose you are you are in an automobile automobile industry as i said let us imagine you are manufacturing a car okay so if you take a car there will be different things right something like uh, chassis something like engine and the components of engine uh, the what is that the top uh, the top arrangements and the glass and what else what not the wheel and the rims everything etc 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 so instead of using all the material which is available to you directly what you will do you will buy it you will buy the materials you will buy the uh, semi components or you will buy the components and you will store it and whenever required you will be taking it you will be utilizing it you will be taking it you will be utilizing it you will be taking it and you will be utilizing it and once the inventory gets like if it gets empty or if it reaches some level okay what is that level we will see later if it reaches some level again we will fill the inventory and we will keep it again we will start using it again if it reaches that level again we will fill it okay all the terminologies we will discuss later okay simple thing is it is like an extra uh, resources which you are going to save and whenever required you will be continuously consuming it and if it gets to some lower level again you will be filling it another simple example which i can give is your um, uh, household thing itself okay just imagine your mother okay so what uh, what actually she will do she will buy some 10 kg of rice and she will store it in the kitchen right and daily whenever required she will use it she will use it and uh, obviously like everyone will be consuming not only not only rice you can take anything rice or vegetables or fruits or whatever the spices which is needed she will be buying it and she will be keeping it in the kitchen and whenever require she will be taking it she will be using it and once after it's getting consumed again she will be take she will uh, make and then we will consume once the rice for example 10 kg you bought 10 kg rice and finally uh, it was just half a kg like all the 900 of kg was uh, done we consumed it so only half a kg was there means what we will do again we will buy it we will refill it that is inventory simply we will be buying it before itself and we will be refilling it and whenever required we will be use it okay right so this is a simple straightforward concept right but there is something which is associated with this suppose uh, let us take the same example let us imagine your monthly salary was something like 30000 okay 30 or 35000 and you have to maintain your family and uh, there is there will be house rent uh, there will be petrol uh, cost uh, and there will be many expenses and also the expenses related to food right the food expenses and now what you will generally do you will buy the materials or all the food items such as as i said rice vegetables fruits or spices whatever required you will be buying it for maybe for the next 10 days or maybe for the next one week right you won't buy for the next 6 months right obviously most of us won't do that 
we won't buy all the things which is required for next 6 month and we will keep it and we will store it in the uh, we will store it in the home. most of us won't do that why we are not doing it the major there are many reasons the first reason is capital will get locked what does it mean by capital getting locked our salary is 35000 and if i buy the goods for 35000 and if i keep and store it how i could tackle other expenses all the capital money which we which i have is getting uh, what i could say it's getting locked so obviously we cannot use that we, we are not going to use that in a day at the same time we don't have a money for other expenses so that is what important in inventory what is the optimized value okay, what is the optimized value which i can store what is the optimized the value optimized which I value uh, of goods which i can order and which i can uh, procure and which i can store it so what is that optimized value that is something which is important you cannot buy goods for one year and you cannot store it there are many disadvantages associated with it with that we will discuss that related to industry later i'm just giving you an example of uh, of your house itself okay so household things right so we won't buy vegetables we won't buy fruits we won't buy rice for next one year we'll buy for one week or maybe maximum one month not for one year surely okay, the major disadvantage is we, the complete capital amount will get locked and also there are other disadvantages like that uh, the the fruits and vegetables might get wasted we cannot store it for more than one week that is itself uh, uh, more so that is what i'm saying what should be the quantity i need to order and when i need to order uh, like from where i need to order all those things are very important related to inventory and if like when i need to order where i need to order and uh, what i need to order whatever the question may be i need to do that so that my total cost will be optimized okay so the cost of buying and also the cost of storing okay everything should be optimized and it should be minimum that is our ultimate aim in inventory controls simple aim this is what we are going to do uh, for the next I guess for the next 20 odd videos okay we'll be doing this only and we will be discussing different different cases and different different scenarios okay right so first I explained to you what we are going to do in inventory control what is actually inventory and um, what is our ultimate aim in this particular chapter now I said that we will be storing goods right what will be the goods which I'm going to store goods means it is not only related to material it can be any resources so generally we know that there are four types of resources men machine material and money we can store anything regarding money what we will do just imagine um, as i said already from the example of household uh, thing itself 35000 salary generally what our mothers used to do they used to save some money separately right whenever there was some urgency whenever there was some emergency we will take that money and we will be utilizing it i hope you could understand if you give that 35000 to your mother what she will do she is not going to spend all the 35000 for the monthly expenses she will be storing some 2000 or 3000 separately maybe she will be putting it in the bank or she will be investing in some what i could say gold or maybe in the what is that uh, post office or lic or whatever it is she will be saving something for separately so that it can be used later and that is something which i was talking about money resources we can save that also and we can use whenever we want similarly with respect to companies we can talk men mission and materials materials it's very common what about um, uh, what is that what about uh, mission simple generator right uh, if there was sudden emergency what we will do we will use generator right so that generator is an inventory for us we will be storing it separately whenever requirement we will use that generator men for example if there was any work which uh, some five or six person is required to do the work suddenly if there was any problem occurs for one or two person suppose they are not well then we need replacement for them so for those things also we can uh, keep some uh, men also in inventory so inventory uh, is not only related to material we can have men material machine and also money all the four can be classified as inventory whatever i'm going to store it and whatever i'm going to use it later that will be inventory okay that is what we are going to do how to optimize that inventory cost how to optimize the total cost we will see that later okay now regarding material i have to talk a bit more what type of material i can store it's not only raw material material means it's not only raw material we will take an example of manufacturing of car if you take an example of manufacturing of car there are there is a possibility that 
you will manufacture the car fully and you will keep it separately as an inventory whenever requirement whenever there was a demand that time you will start releasing it that is something finished goods or finished assemblies so that will be stored in inventories and whenever required we will be releasing it or else semi finished goods or work in progress see instead of assembling fully okay instead of assembling the complete uh, car what we will do we will assemble engine only okay and we will keep the engine in inventory and we will assemble any other thing like for example only the top part or something like that we will keep it as an inventory okay so those are some semi finished work or something which is in progress it's not completely com it's not uh, fully completed and whenever again requirement come we will use it okay so we can store or we can we can make semi finished goods or work in progress also as our inventory now coming for the last one raw materials are uh, components okay for example again i am taking the same example of car you can consider uh, uh, in engine okay if you take there will be cylinder there will be piston there will be lubricant and what else and if you take uh, if you take um, uh, what is that if you take a wheel there is going to be there is going to be wheel and rim and also the tubes okay so many things are there as a raw material i will be storing it okay instead of storing it as a assembled component so three stages we can store the inventory one is the complete um, what else i could say complete manufactured and assembled product the second one is uh, semi finished only half assembled product or work in progress and the third one is we will be storing it as a raw material itself okay so this is the broad idea about inventory this video i just introduced inventory what we are going to do inventory and uh, why inventory is important as i already said to you okay we cannot store more we have to make it optimized and um, and what else what is generally an inventory control is that is what we discussed Let inventory us understand control what are all the different types of uh, cost associated with inventory okay so totally there are basically there are four uh, cost which is associated but in different perspective the cost name will vary what is that perspective all the all the theories all the aspects i will discuss now once after discussing all the theories then i will give you the corresponding formulas of each and every cost okay so first we have four different types of cost as i said uh, for the inventory the first one is purchase cost and manufacturing cost second one is ordering cost and setup cost holding or carrying cost and then the last one is shortage or stock out cost right so first of all we will start with purchase and manufacturing okay uh purchase and manufacturing these are the two different categories of cost suppose if you are going to let us take our simple example marker okay which we used to, to take in our break even analysis also this chapter is some kind of a continuation from break even analysis only okay so let us take a marker there are two different uh, what i could say there are two different possibilities if you are if you are going to sell this marker you will you will do two things the first thing is you will manufacture this you will set up a manufacturing plant you will buy all the raw materials you will manufacture it that is one the another one is what you will do you will purchase it from some person okay you will purchase it from some person and i will be storing it in the inventory and whenever demand comes you will be selling it these are the two things right one is you can purchase from any other person from the, for example from some wholesale from some wholesale dealers you will be purchasing it and you will be keeping it and whenever demand comes you will be selling it that is one category the another category is you will be uh, manufacturing it okay this is nothing but make and buy decision and we already seen how to decide make and buy decision through an example in break even analysis anyways we doesn't need that now we are going to concentrate on inventory cost right so purchase and uh, uh, what is that purchase and manufacturing there are two possibilities right suppose if you are purchasing okay if you are purchasing the cost which is associated with purchasing for example you are purchasing 1000 units the total cost which is associated with purchasing that 1000 unit it's purchase cost okay and similarly if you are going to manufacture 1000 units the total cost which is associated with manufacturing that 1000 units that is going to be manufacturing cost very simple and straight forward now coming to the next cost first let me explain what are all the cost what are all the significance of that later i will go for mathematical aspect listen so second one is ordering cost or setup cost again i cannot say that it is or and because we will be calling it to be ordering cost in case of purchase model 
we will be calling it a setup cost in case of manufacturing model what does it mean simple in case of purchase what we will do we will be ordering it right we will be ordering it to some person that person will be delivering us to delivering it to us right so in case of purchase model we will order to some person some for example some wholesaler he will be delivering it for example you take the marker i will be ordering to some person he will be delivering it to us right and what about setup cost this is something which is associated with manufacturing if you are going to manufacture something what are all the things which is uh, required for setting up that environment setting up that uh, production system okay so that is what setup cost now first we will see some examples of ordering cost okay the examples are such as cost of the tender if you are going to buy something what you will do you will uh, we will be giving a tender and based on we have to conduct the tender so cost which is associated with that tender paperwork cost so again uh, agreement based we will be signing an agreement and those paperwork okay like i he will be saying that see i am giving you a simple example of 1000 units of marker but uh, the things which we are discussing is bit a uh, bit at a bigger level okay maybe you can consider uh, car manufacturing or uh, some two wheeler manufacturing or even some lorry manufacturing or something like that you consider something which is which is at a higher scale what we are discussing what the example which i given was very small scale so paperwork cost the agreement all those things the communication cost if i want to buy from someone i need to talk with a different person and then based on uh, the communications with others then we will decide Uh, which one is going to be uh, less cost at the same time the one who is going to provide the best quality so those things the communication between the buyer and the seller okay the processing cost and then inspection cost once uh, the processing means once we ordered the pro- uh, it has to start right the process of delivery has to start the cost associated associated with that inspection cost means you ordered something that product has arrived to your uh, factory now what you need to do you need to inspect it whether uh, each and every product whatever i ordered was fine or not you which take some big examples like you ordered for cars or something like that you have to check each and every car each and every thing associated with that car what are all the things everything you need to check and then you need to decide so that process of inspection that uh, for doing that we need some money we need to spend some cost that is ins- inspection cost and finally transportation they will be transporting it from some place to another place so the cost which is, which we are going to pay for that okay so all this will fall under per order, ordering cost what is that ordering cost in in case of purchase model we will be ordering it from some person the all the cost all the cost which is associated with that ordering okay all the cost which is associated with uh, bringing the bringing the product which we ordered okay bringing the product which you ordered from that person's place to our place all the all the cost which is associated transportation inspection processing paperwork communication everything will fall under ordering okay this is something which is not directly involved in the product see product cost is different that is what we are seeing here that is purchase cost the cost of product will be different but the cost of bringing it from that person's place to our factory or the place where we need uh, where we need that uh, cost okay that is ordering now coming to setup as i said this will fall under manufacturing category right what are the examples maintenance of the machine okay suppose if you want to manufacture something consider manufacture of car itself a simple example there will be assembly unit there will be ma- there will be fabrication unit so there will be n number of unit just go and visit some uh, uh, car manufacturing uh, plant you will get to know different different units will be there right so for each and every unit we need to spend and the machines which has been uh, uh, which has been installed there it has to be maintained right so that maintenance cost schedule chart schedule chart preparation cost if i am going to uh, plan some schedule what we are going to do which part has to be done today and how many parts has to be done so we need a te- we need a team for that a planning team and that uh, for them we need to uh, what i could say we need to pay for them right so that is something which is schedule chart preparation cost now coming to cost of bringing raw materials again if i am manufacturing also i need a raw material right in purchase directly i will i will buy the finished product in manufacturing i will bring the raw material then i will start manufacturing and now all the cost okay transportation and all those things like uh, from where we are buying everything which is associated with bringing that raw material okay like Uh, by ordering and bringing that raw material to our place that cost and arrangement of worker which worker has to do what work and we need to have 
workers of all the types okay for completing that particular job and finally tools and equipments all the tools and equipments which is required for manufacturing okay so that is what associated with setup okay again you could see again you could see all this cost are not directly involved in this particular final product if you consider uh, the manufacturing of car or if you consider manufacturing of marker all this was not uh, included in in this manufacturing all are some uh, what i could say all are some external factors uh, which is not directly involved in manufacturing this but but without this we cannot complete the manufacturing okay right i hope you you are able to understand without maintaining the machine we cannot manufacture without preparation of chart we cannot manufacture without tools and equipments we cannot manufacture but in the final product this is my final product but in the final product nothing will be involved okay all are something which is back end work okay right now ordering and setup is done final uh, third one is holding or carrying cost okay now i'll uh, take purchase model or uh, uh, manufacturing model you have done okay you have the finished goods or semi finished goods or whatever the goods you have and you are going to store it okay so the cost which is associated with storing okay storing the particular goods all those things will fall under holding or carrying or the cost which is associated with storing the inventory okay so that is holding or carrying and obviously storage cost will be included in that handling cost okay suppose when we are handling uh, something there is a possibility for uh, not handling it properly we need to handle it uh, properly right there we need some particular team for handling it for, for bringing it from one place to another place if you take manufacturing uh, example from the area where it is manufactured from there we need to we need to have a team for handling it and to bringing it to the uh, inventory place and the damage cost of course this will happen when we are transporting from one place to another when we are transporting from manufacture area to another so and if i am storing it in the inventory there also there is a possibility for the product to get damaged okay depreciation i hope that uh, most of you know what is mean by depreciation okay so the worth of that particular uh, product let us take some example i will give an example of gold okay generally uh, generally gold uh, depreciation won't happen but uh, i'm just giving you an example suppose if you are uh, storing some amount of gold okay and uh, for today uh, let us consider you invested 100 crore okay for that gold which you which you have storing which you are storing in the inventory 100 crore but if you store it for more time okay you are storing it for one year or two year three year based on the economic development there is a possibility for decrease in the uh, Uh, decrease in the exact cost of that right exact cost of that uh, product which you stored exact cost of the gold which you stored now as of now um, it is 100 crore worth but after 3 years it might be 95 crores or it might be 90 it might be 85 that 15 crores or that 10 crores which is decreasing worth of that particular worth of that particular product is decreasing right that decrease in worth will be called as depreciation as we move forward in the time obviously every product will get depreciated every product's price will get depreciated i'm just given you an example of gold it doesn't mean that uh, gold price is going to decrease okay just an example now coming to insurance cost of course if i'm storing something there is a possibility for uh, what i could say uh, some disaster to happen you can consider uh, fire accidents or any other any other examples okay some accident to happen if that accident happens all the product which is getting stored will get damaged right so to avoid that we need to we need to uh, what is that we need to put insurance for the product which i am storing in the inventory so the cost which we are paying for the insurance company that's going to be insurance cost finally interest okay i'm sorry finally interest what is mean by this interest if you have bought a uh, loan for manufacturing some few products and you stored you just take an example of chairs and tables okay you manufacture some 2000 chairs and you are storing some 1500 chairs and for manufacturing that 2000 chairs you bought some loan and i need to pay that right i need to pay the uh, interest for every month right for that loan that interest will also be included in the storage cost or carrying cost okay or holding cost simply okay so all this will fall under holding or carrying okay now this holding and carrying cost has something very peculiar the thing is 
how many days in case of holding and carrying cost it is how many days you are holding a product that is also important at the same time how many products you are holding okay just take an example if you are holding 500 products okay for one month if you are holding 1000 product for one month huge difference is there right 500 products for one month if you are holding holding cost will be different 1000 product if you are holding that is if you are if you are storing for one month the holding cost will be different so that is what this holding and carrying cost depends on both the uh, number of units and also it depends on the how many months you are holding it and uh, uh, one more point i forgot to include here uh, uh, it is something like lock of capital i could include this what does it mean by lock of capital you would have invested okay you would have invested some 50 lakhs or 60 lakhs in some products but instead of selling it you are storing it okay so your 50 lakhs the investment the capital which you invested that investment was getting locked there it's not getting converted into revenue you invested something but that investment that capital was getting holded it's not getting uh, what is that converted into revenue that is why it is holding holding it is holding your capital it is holding your investment the initial investment which you made so that lock of capital will also be uh, included in this holding or carrying cost now coming to shortage and uh, stock out cost this is something which is um, uh, which is familiar when which will happen when there was no proper inventory control okay what does it mean suddenly there was a huge demand for some product okay suddenly there was huge demand for some product but you have not done your inventory what is that analysis properly so there is no product which is available in the in, uh, inventory or else for example let us consider thousand products are the demand but the product which is available in your inventory was just hundred so you can serve 100 percent but 900 percent won't won't get served so obviously the the loss the loss which we are going to face or i could say that loss in profit see simply thousand demand was there but i could satisfy only 100 customers so balance 900 customer i couldn't satisfy if suppose i could have satisfied if suppose i could have satisfied the remaining 900 customer also i would have got more profit now that loss in profit is nothing is, is is something which is related with shortage cost or stock out cost when there is no stocks okay when there is no stocks for satisfying the customer in a simple term loss associated with not satisfying the customer or not serving the customer if i am not able to serve a customer how much loss i'm going to get that is something which is stock out or shortage and the examples the first example i already said to you potential profit loss okay so if there was a thousand demand thousand persons are demanding it i could serve only 100 the remaining 900 i couldn't serve so that 900 persons profit has been lost by me if i able to serve that 900 then i would have got uh, i would have got extra profit right so that profit was lost now so potential profit loss now goodwill loss this is something which is very very important for uh, any company which you take okay the goodwill of that particular company will be lost it's very simple thousand person again i'm saying the same example thousand person are demanding but i could serve only hundred person what will that remaining 900 persons will think this company is not good this is not fit for uh, uh, this uh, particular job those type of things those types of word will start coming right and it will spread like something okay something which we know very clearly the negative things will spread very quickly rather than positive things positive things will spread very slowly but the negativity will spread very quickly and that will what happen if there was a stock out and or a shortages so the 900 person who to on whom we cannot serve them okay for whom we cannot serve them those 900 uh, persons will start spreading bad name about our company so we will get some bad name okay that is what goodwill loss now coming to fast transportation cost suddenly there was a shortage what you will do you will start ordering it right and you will be demanding it quickly okay suppose let us consider two companies are there company a company b and this is your company okay so in company a the if i order in company a uh, let us consider for each unit he is going to take thousand rupees but he will deliver in one day okay in company b for each unit he is going to take 500 uh, rupees only but he will deliver in five days okay, he will take five days to deliver the product 
so generally what you will do generally i will prefer buying in b only because uh, anyway but i will be ordering it uh, in a much earlier earlier way itself okay but like before 10 days or before 20 days itself i will be ordering it to that person even though if he takes 5 days also no issues i will be buying it from him because i am getting some 500 rupees less for each one unit but if shortages or stock 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 out appears i will prefer this person only even though he is taking more money i will prefer this person because he is delivering fast right so the transportation uh, was fast but he is taking more money from us so fast transportation but more money so the cost involved in that okay suddenly there was a requirement there was a demand but i couldn't serve so suddenly i will order to company a to deliver it he will take 1000 per unit but he will deliver in one day okay so that cost that cost which we are losing due to fast transportation okay so that will also be included in shortages or stock out okay so i hope so i discussed in detail about all that cost but until now i didn't talk anything about mathematical aspect now we will see that now we will uh, discuss the mathematical aspect of all the cost okay the first is purchase cost and manufacturing cost simple how many units you are going to purchase multiplied by number of units per uh, like sorry how many units you are going to purchase that is number of units multiplied by uh, cost per unit if you are if you are purchasing what is the purchase cost per one unit or if you are manufacturing how much is the manufacturing cost per one unit okay so that is what purchase cost or uh, manufacturing cost purchasing means number of unit into purchase cost per unit manufacturing cost means number of units into how uh, what is the cost of manufacturing per each unit okay now coming to ordering or uh, and the setup cost simple number of orders into cost of order so in an year okay how many order you are going to make so number of orders multiplied by what is the cost associated with each order okay so cost per order similarly setup cost how many number of setups for example maintaining of the machines or all those things so how many number of setup you are doing multiplied by cost per each setup okay so very simple and straight forward all this data will be given in the question okay number of uh, orders or number of setup and similarly cost per order cost per setup will be there in the question or they will be giving you a way to find out that we will discuss that um, later okay now coming to holding holding or uh, carrying cost listen carefully initially you are storing 1000 units but after one day you are consuming 100 units after two days you are consuming 200 after three another 100 after four another 100 so similarly daily you will be keep on consuming something from the inventory right so the number of units which is getting stored in the inventory is not going to be constant throughout the period okay if you are storing some hunt, if if you, if you are storing 1000 uh, today tomorrow it will be 900 day after tomorrow it will be 800 after that it will be 700 so number of units stored in inventory will be varying continuously so you need to take average inventory for a period okay if you are if you are storing some 1000 units for one week for the complete one week 1000 units won't be there sometimes 1000 sometimes 500 sometimes 300 okay based as we keep on consuming the number of quantities will vary so i need to take average inventory for that particular period and you have to multiply that how i need to multiply I already said that holding cost depends on two one is how many number of units you are storing and also what is the time period you are going to store okay so holding cost per unit per time so what is this hc holding cost or carrying cost what is this hc per unit per time indicates it's simple if i want to store one unit okay if you want to store one unit for one unit of time one unit of time means it may be one month or it may be one year or it may be one day it depends on the problem okay so if i want to store one unit for one unit of time what is going to be the cost which i need to uh, which i need to pay so holding cost for storing one unit for one time period is hc per unit per time So if I multiply that with average inventory for a period, I will be getting holding cost. We will discuss numericals so that you will understand it in a better way. As of now, you have to remember the formulas. Now, coming to the last one, that is uh, what uh, stock out cost or sh uh, shortage cost. Okay, so that is also similar. See, one day uh, there will be some ten ten products uh, will be stock out. 
another day some five products another day some 15 products so as the number of uh, as the day varies as the time varies the number of products which is getting shortage will also vary daily we cannot say that daily five products will get shortage we cannot say that right so shortages the number of shortages which is going to happen will also vary with time so again it's not fixed so i will take average value only i cannot say that five will be the um, what is that five will be the number of uh, product which is going to five units will be shortage always i cannot say that someday will be five someday will be zero right so i need to take average units okay what is the average unit which is short for a particular period again this se per unit per time is nothing but if one unit is getting short for one period of time okay that one period of time means one month one day or one year again you will you will get more clarity in this once after discussing the numericals only okay so what is the cost okay what is the shortage cost for one unit for one uh, time period if it is short for one time period which is for one month or one year whatever okay so that is se per unit per time if i multiply with average units i will get shortage cost okay so remember all this we'll be using it when we start our analysis in inventory okay